Let's continue now our conversation. We began yesterday live on CNBC with Steve Bannon and Kyle Bass uh, to talk more about China, maybe the threat there, also about what the U.S. needs to do to make the playing field level when it comes to IPOs and public listings here. Kyle, I want to start with you on that as much because um, to list a company in the United States, to go public, as we're finding out with Lyft and all these other companies, is hard. It takes a lot of lawyers, takes stacks of paper, the regulations are huge. You believe it's way too easy for Chinese companies to list here, and we should simply make the SEC enforce what you call a level playing field. Right, and, and we, can even, we can even say foreign companies, right? Uh, it's not, not just China. China. Fair enough. Uh, you know, there's a certain level of transparency, there's a certain level of risk, there's a certain less le level of attestation to the veracity of the numbers in the financial reports. There are various levels of ADR listings in the U.S that have lesser and lesser requirements for raising, not only listing, just raising money. If they want to do an equity offering or a bond offering here, uh, everyone should adhere. Foreign companies should adhere to the exact same standards as U.S. companies. They should actually have a big four auditor. They should sign off on the financial results. And by the way, they should maybe even show us financials. Some of these companies, Chinese banks in particular, they don't even have to show you financials, right? This is crazy. Jay Clayton could snap his fingers and fix this in one second. They have the SEC. Yeah, all, he's got, all the SEC's got to do is make listing requirements uh, homogenized for the rest of the world. But it's not like we don't have fraud here. I mean, the, there was a company called OnBang a few years ago. They bought the Waldorf Astoria right in, near where we are in New York. Yep. They made a bid for Starwood and Marriott, whatever it was, $12 billion. No one knew where they got their money. Right. They just sentenced the guy that ran OnBang, who is married to Deng Xiaoping's granddaughter, I believe, mm -hmm. to 20 years in prison for fraud. Is that what you're talking about, well, that the system is clear, too closed? we didn't sentence anyone. Right. They did. They did. They did. Yeah. We've he, never sentenced he, anyone he, by from the China, way, this by is the an way. interesting point. Anbon Insurance Company is a money laundering and influence peddling operation of this Chinese Communist Party, CCP. It wasn't fraud. He got caught up in the anti-corruption thing. He basically screwed up. Essentially, over here doing deals, he he was he he had too much exposure. You think they're putting he, one he, of their own away? One hundred percent. They he became but, too famous. Too, too famous. They they put just like Jack Ma. Fifteen. Yeah, just a Jack Ma. What they have done? You not know, Jack Ma. Well, Jack Ma. They, fired, well, they fired him as well, Alibaba. Yeah, they removed he, him. He they retired. Were, yeah, he retired. He stepped right. down. Right. He retired. Does he still own his stock? It's gone. Same thing happened in H&A. He had signed over the, to five, five guys, the chair, uh, unnamed individuals. The chairman of H&A was the same way. The chairman of H&A died mysteriously taking a selfie off a five-foot wall in, in, in France, Provence. in Provence last summer. You know, H&A and Accidents Anbon Insurance were, were, the two, were the two biggest money laundering and influence peddling operations of the Chinese Communist Party. This is how they got their capital into the West. Anbon Insurance Company was too sloppy. It wasn't because of fraud. It was because of what they call the anti-corruption. This is Wan Shishan putting him, and it's 20 years of hard labor. So that, and he comes from the Deng Xiaoping faction. But this is how much what, control, but you know this what? is the CCP has absolutely total control of China. This is not about the Chinese but people. The Chinese people are the most decent, hardworking people in the world. They're enslaved now by a totalitarian dictatorship. I can maybe counter that and say the reason on Bang was buying U.S. assets is because anybody that has money in China, not anybody, but a lot of people, would like to get the money out. They've instituted crackdowns on capital flights exactly. from the country. No, they stopped so, it. They, they, sto well, they, they stopped it. Do you think they yeah. stopped it altogether? Well, for certain. So look, in 2016, when, when all of this was happening, when it, when it boiled to, the, to, the, to its peak, uh, cross-border capital flows, cross-border acquisitions for Western assets got to $225 billion in 2016. 2017 is $23 billion. They turned it off. Now, you'll still see some because the Chinese Communist Party has to procure resources. So they're going to keep lending to ports in Sri Lanka and doing loan-to-own deals. They want to build air bases in Djibouti. They're going to do things, they're going to spend dollars externally for state purposes. But these ideas of companies yeah. uh, recklessly buying hotels and soccer clubs and whatever else these guys are buying. Have you seen another one bought? Not one. This is the Beginning of 2017. Th this is the importance of what Kyle was saying. In Hong Kong, remember, the Chinese Communist Party to keep going desperately needs dollars. What they need is dollars to fund the apparatus. Mm -hmm. That's, and the reason they stopped the, 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 the outflow of capital was to keep as many dollars as possible. Yeah. It was the leadership. It wasn't the little guy. It wasn't old hundred names getting his cash out. That's it was the leadership of the CCP that was getting their that's, cash that's out. Correct. And that's why they shut it down. Listen, this is not, they're at economic war with us. This is not a trade deal. This is an armistice, okay? Do you they're believe at economic that we're, war about with the make, we're about ready to make a trade deal, by I, the way. That, who says? I think, I think we're well, a long, the, the I think market we're, I think, what, look, the market, the market is cheerily, and this is why I say the market and Wall Street are the, it's the IR department for the Chinese Communist Party. Every day you hear, oh, if we don't cut a trade deal that has $2 trillion of soybeans, the market's going to drop 1,000 points, economy's going to crash. You think they're leading, we're trying to lead them. 100%. 
the, the pressure on President Trump has been relentless. What President Trump has finally done is change the entire apparatus of the, of the U.S. government. Instead of strategic economic dialogue where we're getting tapped along, where they're stealing our technology and we're financing them, he's finally saying no. We're going to have six major verticals of structural reform to basically integrate them into the West. We cannot go on with these two systems we have. We're either going to have free market capitalism as the industrial democracies have it, with freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and free capital markets with fiduciary responsibility. Or we government. as a sovereign nation to tell another sovereign nation how to act. Because, okay, here's how we are. If we cut them off from finance and technology, the CCP would collapse in a second. That's who we are. We're the United States of America. We are a sovereign nation. You get to the point of why Trump's president of the United States. Managed decline by our elites was basically giving China everything they wanted. It was the working class that suffered. All the factories and jobs went from the Midwest. The opioid crisis. J.D. Vance, I know. the guy Hillbilly, from the Hillbilly Elegy. Hillbilly been, Elegy is the, the best social. And he tells you the, it's the opioid crisis that took the place when the jobs and the factories left. Tariffs are not about taxes on goods. They're about they're about self worth and self determination. These factory workers, we need to bring those manufacturing jobs back. I'm That's why this I is an economic go here, but You said something to me, Kyle, years ago that it stuck with me, and, I, and I'll never forget this as long as and I've used your line, by the way, which is there's never been a country in the history of the world that pays high wages to make low value goods. Does the United States consumer need to pay more? I, I, it sounds, are we addicted to cheap? And what I mean by that is we want to go to Walmart, I'm not picking on Walmart, we want to go to a big box store and pay nothing for the goods, the plastics, the textiles that we buy, which means we can't pay anybody a wage or we have to make it overseas. Look, there's, there's, a, there's a balance. In other words, can the, human, can the American consumer trade, change, can we change the dialogue? Well, look, global free trade brings in entropy, right? You, you basically, you're going to see uh, low-wage nations move up like we've seen in China. Yeah. You're going to see high-wage high nation, uh, high nations move down. It's just what's going to happen over time. That's what's but, happening. But again, is it, is is it a, a bad thing? Is it, the rest well, wait, of the world wait, wait Brian, is it a game that's rigged or not? What, we're, we're giving China the ability to raise money through Hong Kong and raise dollars through, here, through the United States, and they're forcing capital, dollar-based capital, into these MSCI and maybe the Bloomberg Bond Index, they're forcing hundreds of billions of US dollars into China to help them build the One Belt, One Road program and the islands in the South China Sea. They have to have dollars to do this. Here's how perverted the system is. We basically have slaves in China making goods for the unemployed and underemployed in the West. This is what the Gilets Jaunes revolt in, in France was about. It has to, we have to start to have some equilibrium. Okay, that's why China, what Trump is doing, these major structural reforms, starts to integrate them really into the free market industrial democracies of the West, okay, which we now know is a system that's created more freedom and more wealth than any system in history. Once the Chinese get in, once the Chinese, once the Chinese understand that the CCP is leading them down a path that can't be sustainable, once we get these two systems working together, the world will not just have peace, it'll have enormous this, prosperity. This show goes out in China. This show is being broadcast live maybe, right maybe. now. Yeah, you you know, see in, this in, in China and <laughs> Hong Kong. You might get yeah, the, the firewall. No, I'm saying there are influential people in China that, that hopefully should be are watching this right now. Do you believe, and they know that you've had the ear and still probably do of President Trump, do you believe we will get a trade deal of some kind? I think that Li Hu and the, I think he represents what I call the reformers. There are many, many, many people in the Chinese Communist Party that understand they need massive economic reform. Besides political reform, economic reform to more integrate. It's those reformers that back channel keep saying, you guys got to be tough with us. You have to be tough with us because we've got to stop this madness, particularly the warlordism that state-owned mm -hmm. industries are. Remember, this is the way the Chinese Communist Party skims cash off the top. It's the state-owned industry. And and that China's greatest export is deflation. It's overcapacity and deflation. It's why Japan. And it's why, artificial currency pegs. It's, exactly. To, it's to why Kyle's Abe's point. on the plane. Abe this weekend. And this Friday and Saturday are a big deal. Why, when the president's going over to see the new emperor next month and then going to Osaka for what the G20, when he's taking two trips into Japan, why is the prime minister of Japan flying over here? You know why? To have a frank discussion with the president of the United States, the importance of structural reform in the trade yeah. deal. Donald Trump has done more to save the industrial democracies by now having a meaningful negotiation. And all I'm saying is the American people have to have his back in Wall Street, in the corporate lobbyists and corporate America, have to back off and let Trump cut the deal he wants to cut. I'm gonna flip the script on you. If you had to advise President Xi, he hires you as a consultant. 
to, to advise on what they should ask for from President Trump, what would it be? I think President, what President Xi should do, first off, fire Wan Xi Shan, free your people, stop the Uyghurs, stop all this persecution in the underground church, bring in the rule of law. Look at how the Chinese people have prospered in Hong Kong, basically an island with no resources. Look what they've done in Taiwan. Yeah. Look what they've done in the United States of America with their four or five Chinese uh, Americans here. These are some of the most productive, smartest, toughest, hardworking people in the world. Everywhere they've gone, they've created value in great communities. Look what the China, look what China would be if you had the rule of law. That's what I tell them, number one. Number two, I would say, listen to Donald Trump. Listen to what Trump and Lighthouse and others are saying. What we're trying to do is get massive structural reform so you can start to integrate into a really a free market system. That system, look, I'm Irish American like you are. We came from essentially nothing, right? It was, it was generations of people of hardworking blue collar people. That can happen in China. The Western democracies, the Judeo-Christian West, has created more value and more freedom for the little guy than any system in history. That can happen in China, and that's why this is not about the Chinese people. The Chinese people are as decent and hardworking yeah. as ever. This is about, we've allowed a radical cadre to take a totalitarian uh, charge of China, and that system has to be broken. And Donald Trump's, this is why I say it, it's not a trade deal. It's an armistice on an economic war they've been running against the West for over 20 years.